بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن شرور سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله الاطهار وصحابته الاخيار ما تعاقب الليل والنهار يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل بدعه ضلاله indeed all praises due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him and we believe in him and we rely on him and we seek his protection from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our deeds whomever allah blesses with guidance none can misguide and whomever allah who punishes with misguidance none can guide and i bear witness that there is no true god except allah who alone without any partners and that our beloved sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger dear brothers and sisters I remind myself and yourselves to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as that is the command of Allah to every human being and to every believer. And so he addresses us all. Ya ayuhal nas, ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. O humankind, fear your Lord. Be mindful of your Lord who created you from a single soul. And this command is given specifically to the believers as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslah lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuti'i Allah wa rasulahu faqad faza fawzan azima O you who believe, fear Allah, be mindful of Allah and speak justly يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ If you do so, your Allah will rectify all your affairs and He will forgive all your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed attained the greatest success. Our khutbah today is a continuation of last week's khutbah about purification of the self. And we spoke in that khutbah about the, the nature of human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with many innate beastly qualities and so the human being is very impulsive and the appetite the human being has can never be filled if you give the son of Adam a valley of gold he will seek a second and so you see, every human being in the world is always seeking something. No one is satisfied except the one who has the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has created us argumentative. Allah says, Aksara jadala. The human being is ever increasing and overly argumentative. The human being is hasty. Khuliqa al insanu min ajal. The human being has been created out of hastiness. Always wants immediate gratification, instant results. 
Allah created the human being also among the flaws, he's kanud. He remembers all the negativity and forgets the favors and positives of people and of his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when he's given, he forgets Allah and he disobeys Allah and he thinks himself self-sufficient and powerful and independent. And then when he is trialed, he's humble and pleased and begs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many other qualities that the nafs, the ego of the human being, however you translate it, is trialed with all these difficult qualities. And they need to be purified. They need to be, we need to cleanse ourselves from these negative qualities. And the most pure of Allah's creation is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For he did not live for himself. He reached a stage that has been not reached by any prophet and messenger. His realization was that Allah is the absolute truth and everything besides him is false. And so he didn't get upset for himself. He didn't seek self-interest. Everything he did, every word he said in a hadith was only for the pleasure of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. He never hit, he never striked anyone, nor did he ever get angry for any self-interest. His anger would only be for Allah and according to the method Allah wants, allows him to get angry. And so you would see his, red, his face turn red alayhi salatu wasalam and a vein show from the middle of his head alayhi salatu wasalam. But that was it. He got angry, he disciplined and he purified himself so that his nature, natural human impulses are all, in accord, all for Allah and all in accordance to the command of Allah. And so that is the jihad. That is the jihad that we are all upon. The struggle of purifying the self, eliminating our ego, our pride, and submitting ourselves and conducting ourselves according to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get out of this sense of heedlessness, this sense of absent-mindedness, where we don't want to think about our behavior. It's a lot easier to just act and do and follow whatever initial thoughts and behavior we have than to actually calm down and think and be mindful and ask ourselves, is this allowed by Allah? And is this the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And so that is just a brief summary of what we spoke of last week. Today, I want to speak about this topic of purifying the self from another angle. And this is to describe the categories of the nafs the categories of the self according to the Qur'an. And so the Qur'an mentions three types of nafs, three types of ego. The first one is the lowest one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ عُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّهِ And this is quoting the wife of Aziz, of Aziz Fir'aun. Uh, uh, Nasr, the minister of Egypt. So she, may, she states this statement and Allah quotes her and he mentions this and states this in the Quran. And so it says the meaning of the verse that the self, the human self, the human ego specifically, because the, the nafs can be translated differently, but in this context, we'll translate it as the ego of the human being. That the nafs is insistently commanding of evil. Inna nafsa la ammaratun bisu. Ammara is excessively commanding. In Arabic, when you say ammar, you add that, that it, it has an emphasis. So, so that the self is always and excessively commanding us to do some type of evil. And so our scholars, one of the words of wisdom, they say, nafsa ka illam tushghilha bil khair, shagalat ka bil shar. Yourself, your ego, 
If you don't keep it occupied with good, it will keep you occupied with evil. So that is the inclination to satisfy one's desires and urges, to engage in stimulating pleasures, to be lazy, to not want to work hard. And so if a person doesn't build and develop their self and build as just parents, we develop our children to be responsible, hardworking, we hold them accountable and teach them accountability, teach them the importance of their actions and the consequences it has, to look forward beyond the next step, to look 10 steps ahead, 20 steps ahead, to look at the virtue of deeds, not just your gratification, to consider others and have that courtesy for others, to have that selflessness. So this needs development. Parents develop their teachers with these qualities. I'm sorry, parents develop their, uh, their children with these qualities, teachers in the same way in, with their students. And each human being is responsible for developing himself because we are all held accountable for ourselves. So once we become adults and there's no one to tell us you have to do this, no one to hold us accountable, no parent or superior that we have to respond, report to, especially for men for whom Allah has made caretakers of their families. It is very, very important to humble the self, to reflect on oneself, on one's behavior and lifestyles and decisions. And if the leader cannot do that, then his followers are doomed to follow him. And so it is of utmost importance for leaders to hold that awareness that the self is inclined to evil, is inclined to these bad qualities, and that it must be purified. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a ruh by which we are able to experience this divine presence subhanahu wa ta'ala and an intelligence by which we are able to understand realities and meanings and greater purposes beyond physical appearances and physical pleasures. And so this is a nafs al-amara bisu. And so the, the moment a person becomes a Muslim and they say shahada to an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah alayhi salatu wassalam, they admit and affirm that they have a Lord and that he is the absolute truth and that none deserves to be worshipped besides their Lord. They eliminate the ego, and they center their beliefs and their devotion to their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so once a person makes their shahada, they get out of that nafs al-ammara bisu. They have a greater purpose in life. They have a greater meaning in life. The disbeliever who has no faith, who has no greater purpose, simply exists to satisfy him or herself. And so, we see this especially in today's culture. Do what pleases you. You can be or do whatever you want. The only moral principle that people are given, as long as you don't harm others, you're free to pursue what, what brings you happiness. Why? Because there's no Iman in Allah. When there's no Iman in Allah, the entire world becomes about you and your wants and your desires and your pleasures and what gratifies you and so on and so forth. And the more you satisfy the ego of the human being, the more the human being wants to consume until he consumes everything. And so our deen, our Prophet ﷺ presented us these teachings in simple yet eloquent and meaningful and profound hadith. If you were to give the son of Adam a valley of gold, he would seek a second. And none, nothing satisfied the desires of the child of Adam except dirt. The human being will keep wanting to consume and keep wanting to take. And so, and we see, subhanAllah, this, this, this belief, this, this ideology that has become widespread has dominated the minds of, of many people, especially young people. And so it is by shahada and the commitment to this shahada that we live for Allah, that our devotion is for Allah. That my, my prayer, devotion, and my life and my death 
is all for Allah Rabbul Alameen. That is the believer's status. And so we ask Allah to make us firm on this path. The second nafs, then the human being enters the second stage, is al amaratun bisu or Al-Lawama. The first one is al amara bisu which is mentioned in Surah Yusuf. The second nafs is the nafs that is guilty, the nafs that incriminates itself, that is remorseful. And so lawama, it is the nafs, it is a self that is always remorseful about its sins, its struggles. It struggles between the obedience of its Lord and between the fulfillment of its desires and pleasures. And so this nafs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it a, a praiseworthy position. And Allah swears by it. وَلَا أُقُسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ Allah swears by this soul. And so Allah making an oath by this soul, meaning that it is something sacred and beloved and noble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this soul recognizes this, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الله, And it affirms the oneness of Allah. And it feels guilty and it, it incriminates itself for the sins that it commits, for the mistakes that it makes, and is consistently trying to improve itself, purify itself. And every time it stumbles, it tries to get back up. And even when it's sinning, there's a guilt, there's a feeling of guilt in its heart. So this is a nafs al and so this lawama is of, of many levels. It isn't just one. Well, some of our scholars, they mention some of the degrees of this nafs is that it can only be remorseful about major sins. If it commits zina or drinks khamar or does something major, it feels guilty. But minor sins don't bother it as much. Or maybe they're selective about sins. Maybe they, they don't do a certain sins, but they habituate and do other sins normally. Maybe they backbite regularly and they don't feel guilty about that. Or they don't pray and they don't feel guilty about that. It doesn't bother them. There's no sense of guilt and remorse. Or maybe they engage in haram wealth or whatever reason, or they're just disobedient and rebellious towards their parents and there's no sense of shame, inner guilt, inner awareness of their sin. So this is the lowest level of this nafs al or, or of the, most, the, 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 the worst levels is to commit major sins and to not have remorse. Some people alhamdulillah, are better than this and they ascend a bit. They are very remorseful with major sins, but they habitually commit minor sins. And habitually committing a sin makes a person a fasiq. It puts them in the category of fisk. What does that mean? What does fisk mean? To routine, routinely commit a sin. To normalize a sin. I'm just going to live this way and this is, this is it. And so they say, Al-Israru ala sagair min al kabair To ongoingly commit minor sins can reach a person to a level of major sins. And so this nafs al-ammara, although it's very guilty, it habitually commits these minor sins. And it doesn't have remorse. There's no sense of guilt. And guilt is of the most important. It is the heart of Tawbah. And Nadmu Tawbah, or the, as it has been narrated in the Hadith, the entirety of Tawbah is remorse. And so every, every time a person has this sense of guilt, this sense of Nadam and, 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 and regret, it, it, they have started their Tawbah. They are making the most important quality of Tawbah. Although Tawbah has other requirements. But they have achieved the essence of Tawbah, which is to have guilt, which is to have remorse. Because a person, once their heart reaches a stage where there's no sense of guilt and remorse, they're in trouble of never making Tawbah, of dying upon that state. And so this is a nafs al lawama And then those who are even more right, who are a level or a degree higher, they're remorseful about not following the way of Rasulullah as it should be followed, about not following the sunan, 
about wasted time, about times of heedlessness, about all the nonsense they engage in. They have this remorse, and this is the remorse of many righteous, the salihin, that they, 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 they're not sinning, committing major or minor sins, but they're not living the prophetic life, and they're not striving for it as it should be. And so they're remorseful over that. And so we see this nafs al it covers many groups and many types of Muslimin. And we are, all, the nafs is consistently turning, the hearts consistently turn and flip and turn, as mentioned in the hadith. That's why the heart is called the qalb. It's, it's, it's a being that ongoingly changes. The human nafs can feel happy one moment, has an experience, feels depressed another moment, one moment confidently and passionately worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and another moment struggling to pray and stand before Allah. One moment has absolute conviction in Allah, and another moment can have strong doubts about Allah. This heart turns and flips and changes consistently, depending on its influences and environment and knowledge and steadfastness. And so that is why the prophetic dua was that he alayhi salatu was salam would say, Ya muqallib al qulub O oh, turner of the hearts. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he, he has the realization that the only doer is Allah. And the one who controls all affairs is Allah. And so he asked Allah, Ya muqallib al qulub O oh, one who turns the hearts, make my heart steadfast upon your deen. Make me inclined to your worship. Do not allow me to deviate from the obedience and your worship. And so that is the second category of the, of the nafs, that it is a lawama. And a person rarely stays in one, but rather fluctuates and sometimes might drop to the lowest and sometimes might ascend to the highest and sometimes struggle in between. And so we ask Allah to purify our souls and to forgive our sins. And to allow us to reach the month of Ramadan and accept our worship therein. Allahumma ameen, aqulu ma sami'atum wa astaghfirullah ni wa lakum, fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa bihi nasta'inu ala umuri dunya wa ad-deen, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ibadallah, ittaqullaha haythu ma kuntum, وأتبع السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن. And the final nafs is described in, is mentioned in Surah Al-Fajr. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فدخلي في عبادي ودخلي جنتي O oh, content soul, this is a nafs that is completely content with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a nafs that has purified itself to the extent its desires are in line with the obedience of Allah. It doesn't satisfy any of its urges except in a manner Allah allowed. And so, it gets married and doesn't ever look at haram and is content with the, the, the risk that Allah gave them. Content with their spouse and they don't extend their eyes elsewhere. Allah has given them provisions. They're content with every, everything they have. They aren't regretful. They aren't looking elsewhere. They're not looking at other beings and other human people and their possessions. Very content. Content with Allah as its Lord. A proud soul. Doesn't see the deen of Allah as a burden, but sees the deen of Allah as a liberation. This is the nafs whose mind and heart is completely inclined with the love and obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finds that honor, fulfillment, happiness, freedom is not in satisfying the desires, but lives with the absolute reality that to be liberated and to be free and to be fulfilled is to be devoted to Allah, to be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
This is a nafs al mutama'innah. It struggles. It is naturally inclined to the obedience of Allah and could, would not sin even if it wanted to. It is not its nature to sin. To miss prayer, it's not in its nature. Everything in the life of this soul is, is, is around, revolves around the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their character, their relationships, their work schedule, everything, every decision they're making is with the awareness of Allah in their heart. And the guidance of Allah is their way of life. And so this nafs, Allah praises it. And he says, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutama'inna, O content soul. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutama'inna, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O pure, O content soul, come, uh, 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 come out. Come out to the mercy of Allah. Come out, come forth to the glad, glad tidings you have been promised. Enter my servants and enter my garden. And so Allah welcomes it. This is a soul that looks forward to the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That looks forward to the meeting of its Lord. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ah. Whoever loves the meeting of Allah, Allah will love its meeting. Allah will love to meet them. وَمَنْ كَرِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ And whoever hates to meet Allah, Allah will hate to meet him. So this is a soul that is looking forward to the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah looks forward to meeting him or her. And welcomes it with mercy and with the angels of Rahmah and Sakina. May Allah make us among those souls. And so with Ramadan approaching soon, Ramadan is a month of self-purification. It is a month of discipline. It is a month where we stop not just doing the haram, but we stop even doing the halal. We don't eat or drink. Eating and drinking is completely permissible. But during this month, Allah tells us, refrain from the halal, so that you are better able to be mindful of Allah, so that you can escape the shackles of your shahawat. So that you can escape your desires and be constantly in the awareness of Allah. Make abundant dhikr. Recite the Quran. Pray at night. Stand in prayer. And so we see after the month of Ramadan, it is so much easier to live accordance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. And during the month of Ramadan, of course. During this month, we not only strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we also improve our character. Improve our character. And the Prophet ﷺ, he warns us in the hadith, whoever doesn't leave false, test, false uh, testimony and false speech, there's no reason, Allah has no need for his fasting. So there's a great warning that during our fasts, it isn't just a fast of abandoning desires, but it is a, it is a fast of abstaining from uh, abandoning, uh, abstaining from food and, 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 and sexual pleasure, but it's a fast of abstaining from bad character, from anger, from bad speech, learning patience and self-control, kindness and compassion. So Ramadan is a month of self-purification. It is a month to tame the self and draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a month to repent to Allah. And so that month, may Allah allow us to reach it. And may Allah make us among those who stand in it, in prayer, and who fast in it, and whom it is accepted from. Allahumma ameen. We conclude with peace and blessings upon our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. As Allah commands, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuha al-ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها 
أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا إلى طاعتك اللهم بلغ بلغنا رمضان ووفقنا فيه وتقبله منا يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة